Welcome to a Key Smash Studios tutorial. This week we're going to be continuing with tile maps. Last week we talked about the different basic parts of tile maps. This week we're going to be creating a scriptable tile. The reason we're going to be doing this is it'll help make creating our 2D levels even easier. And this is because the scriptable tile we're going to create today will take into consideration the neighbor tiles that it has, and it will decide whether or not it needs to update the tiles around it, so that way we have a edge to our tiles. This will save time, as we won't have to go between different tiles in our tile palette to paint edges, or the tops, or the centers of the screen. It just allows you to program specifically what you want to happen when you're creating a tile map. In this particular example, we'll be using the same dirt as we used last week, but we'll be including a top dirt with grass and then edge dirts that have just darker areas so you can tell that it's the bottom of it or the edge of it. So we're going to go ahead and begin by creating our C sharp script and we're just going to name this dirt tile. So the first thing we want to do in here is add a using Unity tile map. And then we're also going to add a using Unity editor, but we only want this to be used if we're in the Unity editor. So we'll just add a simple check and then add the using Unity editor. and then we'll just add our end. So we're going to begin by getting rid of the mono behavior in inheritance and adding a tile inheritance. We won't need start or update in this script at all, so you can delete both of those, and then go ahead and add an array of sprites. And I will just call this dirts. So a tile base has two specific functions that we're going to override today, and that's refresh tile and get tile data. Refresh tile determines which tiles in the vicinity of it are updated when the tile is added to the tile map. This allows us to check whether it's an edge piece, a top piece, a bottom piece, or a center piece. And then we'll also be updating get tile data, which just determines how the tile looks. So we'll begin with the refresh tile overload. So we'll create public override void refresh tile. We won't be using the base, so you can go ahead and delete that. Inside this, we're going to create two for loops, and this is simply for checking the neighbors of our current tile that we're looking at. And then inside this, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a vector 3 int, and this will just be location, and then we're going to create a new vector, and this is going to consist of the position, our current position x, plus the x in our for loops. Sorry, make sure to fix that for loop to have a 1 there. And then do the same with the Y position. And then the Z position will just be the regular Z that's already set. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the tile exists. And if it does exist, then we're going to refresh the tile map with the location that we just created. And how we're going to determine if this tile map exists is we'll create a function, and this will be a private bool, and it will just simply be called has dirt tile. And this will take in a I tile map, and it will also take in a vector 3 int. And all we're doing with this is returning 
the tile map at get position. And we're making sure that it's equal to this. And then we'll just go back up to our if statement and we'll add the has dirt tile function that we just created and pass it our location as well as the tile map. Now that we've overrided that one, that's all we're going to do to the refresh tile. Now we want to create our get tile data override function. So this will also be public and override void get tile data. Again, we won't be using the base, so you can go ahead and get rid of that. And essentially all we're going to do here is count how many neighbors it has. We're going to do this with an int and then we'll check the has dirt tile function with the tile map that we currently have. And then we'll take the position that we've passed this. And then we're going to add a vector to it so that way we can check all the neighbors. So we'll be checking one to the left, one to the right, one above and one below. So the first one we'll check is the one above. And then what we're going to do, we're going to say if this is true that there's a neighbor above it, then return one, else return zero to our int mask. So we're going to continue this so that way we can add to our mask how many neighbors we have and determine it in a function later on. So we'll do the same thing. We'll do tile map and we'll do position plus a new vector. And this time our vector will be determining if it's one to the right. And we'll do essentially the same thing here, except we're going to say if it's true, give us a 2. If it's false, still give us a 0. And I'm just going to copy this line and paste it, and we'll just change inside here. So now we're going to say if it's 1 down, then give us a 4, else give us a 0. And what we're going to do here is say give us an 8 if it's true, 0 if it's false, and then we're going to do a negative one in the x direction. So now we have a way to determine how many neighbors we have. And so we're gonna go ahead and plug this into an index. And then we'll create a function here in a second called get index. And that's what we'll use to determine based off our mask, the amount of neighbors that we have. So this function will be a private int get index and it takes a byte that we'll call mask as a parameter. This function is simply just going to be a switch and there will be different cases that we'll have based off of how many neighbors we have and so what we need to do is determine those. So to kind of show you how I went about this, if you look at this, I have a top left edge piece, a top piece, a top right piece, side pieces that are separate, and then the same for the bottom as well as a center piece. The black number is the index that I will be plugging the PNG into and then the red number is the calculated mask for each of those numbers. So we need a switch case for each of these these red numbers and then we will return the index number associated with it. So I'll go ahead and minimize that and we'll go ahead and do this. So for case 0 we will be returning 0 which will be our base piece for the center. And then we will have for case 6 we want to return 1 which will be our top left piece. And then for case 14 We'll return to, which will be our top center piece. And then we'll do case 12, which will return 3. And then we'll do case 7, which will return 4. Case 13. We'll return 5, case 3, we'll return 6, case 11, we'll return 7, case 9, we'll return 8,
And then finally, case 15 will return 0. And then if Whoops. And then if it's none of these, I will simply return negative 1. So now we'll go back up to our get tile function. And so we're going to say if our index is greater than or equal to 0, and our index is less than our dirt's length, then we want to go ahead and provide information to our tile. So we're going to do tile data and we'll start with the sprite and we'll make it equal to our dirt's index, which will just be what we assign down here. And then we'll go ahead and do our tile data's color. I'm going to make the color white, which is simply just I want it to be what I put into the scene. I want I don't want it to have any kind of highlight or tint to it. But all you have to do to add a highlight or tint is change this color. And then we'll add a flag. And the tile flag locks the transform to the place that the brush puts it. And then finally, we'll have a collider type, and our specific, this specific tile won't be colliding with anything. It'll just be the background, so our collider type will be none. Now we have our refresh tile function overrided. We have our get tile data overrided. We have a function to determine if a dirt exists at a specific position, and a way to get the index of our current tile based off its neighbors. So now the final thing we need to do is we want to be able to access this. And to access this, we have to access it through a menu under Assets. So we'll go ahead and create a way to do that. So we want to make sure that we're in the editor for this. So we'll check if we're in Unity Editor. And then if we are, we'll go ahead and create a menu item. My menu item will be at Assets, Dirt Tile. And then what we want with this is for it to have a static function that's void. And we're just going to call it Creating Dirt Tiles. And inside it, all we're going to do is create a string path, which will be a editor utility. And we'll save the file panel in the project. And then we'll go ahead and create the parameters for this. So save dirt tile will be our title. Our default name will be new dirt tile. The extension will be asset. And then our message will be save dirt tile. And then our path will be assets. We'll go ahead and close that off. And then we're going to create a function to make sure that our path isn't null. So if the path is null, then we simply want to just return. We don't want to continue. We don't want to try to create this asset. If it's not null, then we want to go ahead and do our asset database. And we're going to create an asset. And then this will be a scriptable object of type dirt tile. And then it will be at path. And then we'll go ahead and add our end if. Sorry, you want to do scriptable object dot create instance of our dirt tile. Now that we've saved, we'll go back and we'll go under assets that we now have our dirt tile. So we'll go ahead and create one and we're going to drop it into our current folder of scripting tiles, and we'll simply call this scripting dirt. So now you can see it's right here. So if we go up here, you can see our public array of sprites that we made earlier. And based off this, you can see that we're going to need nine different dirt PNGs. So we'll go ahead and make our sprite array nine. And then I'll go ahead and pull those in. So I'll just drop my images into this folder. And then we're going to drag them into the thing. So again, if we reference this, I know that 
this base dirt will be the zero, and then the corners and edges will follow accordingly with the index here matching the index in this array. So I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, now all of our PNGs have a corresponding index, so now what we'll do is we'll go to Tile Palette. This is our Dirt Palette from last time, but we want to create a new palette, and we'll just call this Scripting Palette. And then what you're simply going to do is you'll drag in the asset that you created based off your script into here. And now that we've created the palette, we need to go ahead and create our Tile Map just as we did last time. And then you can select which tool you want to use and simply drag it out. And then as you can see, it auto sets my things for me. So as I did last time, I need to go back to my images and I need to set them all to be 128 in pixels so they don't overlap each other. Now you can see more easily that this has gone through and checked the neighbors and adjusted accordingly to the tile map. I hope this helps you develop your 2D levels even quicker. It's very beneficial so you don't have to waste time switching between the different things in a tile palette for if you want edges or tops or different layers to things. So please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.